Today's a very exciting day. I got this package through the post. What's in the box? It's a box of glass enamels, enamels that I've been waiting for for ages. I have been following um, a glass ceramicist and colorist on Facebook for a while who's been posting these amazing samples of his ruby reds and his magentas in, in translucent enamels. And I have been wanting to get hold of them for ages. They're here. And I'm going to go through the whole process of how to work with these enamels. The whole topic of enamels and how to work with enamels is a really big one. It's one that you, the community, the creative community out there have been asking for for ages. I'll be honest with you, after 37 years of working in stained glass, I've used enamels four or five times on different projects, so it's not often. I'm still a student at heart. I'm still somebody who wants to learn. And because I want to learn, I've reached out to this fantastic worldwide creative community that we have to other glass artists who I know have worked with enamels. Collectively, if we can share our experiences together, we can all lift our understanding of how to work with these wonderful enamels, which enable us to add extra color and extra depth and extra dimension to our creations. So now, today, we can make this enamel tutorial video. It's a voyage of discovery, and we'll go on it together, starting right now. So let's get the show on the road by choosing a selection of enamels. We're going to go with three suppliers here, starting with our British supplier, Alexander's Arcanum's three lovely magenta, red and purple enamels to work with. And the second group of enamels we're going to test is the French range of Debitus paints and stains. This company make a tremendous range of vitreous paints which are great for conservation work as well as a range of enamels which we're going to try today. So Pelé Glass in the Netherlands supply these enamel and silver stained firing temperature kits which provide us with a wonderful range of Roche enamels and silver stains sample kit. I'm very excited to try these because this is a wonderful collection of colors really quite a comprehensive range of colors available as we can see here. So I'm going to go through each of these uh, Roche enamels. I'm going to mix them with a little bit of Roche water-based paint medium and fire them in the kiln, a gas kiln, for about 15 minutes at 660 degrees centigrade. So a good way of illustrating how enamels work is to use the traditional um, bird, the, the Victorian bird, which we'll all be familiar with. Often they have a selection of colours in there. So I've got a variety of birds that I'm going to use my enamels with. So we're going to add a little bit of debitus paint to our palette and it is really quite gritty. So we have to spend quite a few moments just working our way through grinding this down and I'm going to use for the grinding this which is called a muller, a glass muller. These glass mullers are really useful because they're quite heavy and they allow us to use a larger flatter area to, to grind. It's like a millstone isn't it where we can actually grind down the pigment rather than just using a palette knife which is grinding small areas of the pigment we can use this glass muller to just work our way around grinding the pigment down and I'm going to spend a few moments doing that. So to this ground down dry mixture of grisaille paint I'm going to add a different medium, Roche oils. Now Roche oils are very interesting because they behave like an oil and they're called an oil but in actual fact they are a water-based painting medium and they are they behave a little bit like propylene glycol, but there are some other ingredients in there as well. And basically it allows us to work with the paint for a lot longer before it starts to dry out. So when I bought my Debitus range of paint, paints uh, several years ago now, I bought quite a range of them. I made these samples um, just on small pieces of glass, but I mix them with water. So it's going to be interesting to see what changes there's going to be when I use the same paint but this time mixed with Roche painting medium. And I suspect it's going to be a lot smoother 
to blend. And I think you can see already, hopefully the camera is picking that up, the streaks or the bristle marks that you get with water and a badger brush as opposed to this lovely graduated color from very pale to richer uh, brown, ready brown, using exactly the same pigment but it's the different painting medium that's making a change. I'm going to make a little well in the paint. I'm going to use a clean pipette and add a little bit of oil painting medium to this mixture. And we just work the paint into the medium. I'm just going to, with a soft, flat headed brush, just add a little bit of water to this mixture to create more of a paint consistency. So let's just add a little bit of detail here and we can then begin to badger that down with a badger, regular badger brush. Let's just work our way through that. So I'm going to turn the kiln on in a second and dry the paint medium out a little bit more so that I can then scratch it back and continue working on a smaller scale, a more controlled scale with needles. It's really nice medium to work with. It's very, very forgiving. It allows you to push the paint around. The paint goes where you want it to go. It doesn't leave streaks. It doesn't leave marks. Uh, I would really encourage you to experiment with this Roish painting medium if you get the opportunity because it allows you to work a lot longer and the paint doesn't dry out. So bringing the wet paint back out the kiln, it has dried. I just had it at 50 degrees centigrade for about 20 minutes in the kiln and it has dried the painting medium out so we can now scratch it back. I'm just going to use a small scrub brush such as this uh, plus um, a little needle, uh, this is sort of a homemade device uh, to scratch back and create a little bit more shading and modeling in the bird. So um, let's get rid of the excess paint first of all. And this paint comes off really, really easily. It's really lovely to work with. It doesn't leave any kind of residues. There is no added gum arabic in this mixture. It's simply Roish painting medium and water. So now we have done our experiments with our various enamels. Um, I've landed on two enamels that I particularly want to use with this bird. Uh, the Debitus Blue, number one, uh, which is mixed in a Roish uh, water-based paint medium. Canterbury Red, uh, Alexander's Arcanum's uh, Canterbury Red, which I'm going to mix actually with water and gum arabic because I find the water and gum arabic mixture to be a slightly denser mixture than the Roish paint medium mixture which is more uh, translucent and oily and I want to get the density of color in the red area especially around the head of the bird. So let's start by mixing up a little bit of our Canterbury Red. Spend a few moments just grinding it down. It's already very nicely ground down. It's extremely well ground down. It's a little bit like talcum powder as I've said previously which is ideal really. And of course when we paint our enamels onto the glass surface. We are actually painting on the same surface as the vitreous paint. So that's the internal surface rather than the back side of the glass. The back side of the glass is reserved generally for yellow silver stain. So here's our first um, trial of enamels actually with painted work and immediately what is apparent is the um, 
pink that I thought was going to be really, really pale is actually really nice. It's a really nice sort of baby pink. And this pink here has come out really blotchy. I'm not happy with this at all. Um, this is the Canterbury Red um, with uh, water and gum arabic. And uh, no, it's just really, you can see it's really dark and blotchy and too strong a color. It was meant to be a pink, but it's come out as this cranberry red, too strong. Uh, and even here, this detail here is really quite strong. So an important kind of takeaway from that is to really be uh, subtle with the amount of enamels that go on to start with. This blue is interesting. It's actually worked out quite well. I'm going to add to that and created um, a slightly denser areas here. And I really like this dark blue area here that tends to work quite well. And the area that, that I filled in with a little bit of more uh, a Canterbury red is really quite opaque. So getting the weight of the pigment right is crucial, I think. So mixed results but interesting results nonetheless. So I'm going to carry on and I'm going to add some more enamels to this um, and just experiment a little more and develop them further. So we've had a few experiments with our enamels with varying success. We're going to draw some conclusions about what we found out. I'm just going to add one final layer, which is the yellow silver stain to spice up some of the existing colors. Obviously colors like the uh, transparent blue, if we add yellow silver stain behind, we're going to get a nice green effect. So I'm interested to see how that works. We have a worldwide community of creative artists sharing their work on social media, and I've left links to the following artists. Anika van der Meer, a South African artist, whom I interviewed on my YouTube channel. Rita Schimmelfarb, again an artist who I've interviewed on my YouTube channel, doing some amazing work with enamels. A David DeFontes, a Californian-based artist, again doing some really exciting things. Check out all their work using the links below. So we've come to the end of our experimental phase of working with enamels and what are our conclusions? Well, let's start with the different types of enamels that we work with, starting with debitus. The debitus range of paints and enamels are fantastic for certain things. I've had this range for a long time and I've used it for conservation work. It's extremely good if you want to reproduce a medieval paint recipe or a Victorian paint recipe which has a particular liver brown or a red tone to it. The debitus range of vitreous paints is absolutely excellent. Where they fall down slightly is in their enamel range. The enamels tend not to be as translucent and as transparent as I would like. They're also extremely gritty. They require a lot of grinding down. Arknum Ceramic Colors, our British ceramic supplier, these enamels have been absolutely fantastic. At the moment, there are only three colors in the range, but I found them to be a joy to work with. They are really talcum powder soft. They mix extremely well with water and gum arabic. They also mix really well with the Roche painting medium and are applied to the glass, give a beautiful intensity of color, which is entirely transparent. I will leave links in the description below where you can find all of these supplied enamels online. Roche or Rouché, as our American friends call them, these enamels have been absolutely fantastic. I'm so impressed with this range. The student kit of enamels that was supplied to me from Pele Glass were, was really fantastic, really comprehensive range. And they have been so easy to work with, giving a beautiful translucent, transparent effect. So here are our final sample panels. We're finished our experimentation with enamels for today. I've added a little bit of yellow silver stain. What's the takeaway? What's the lessons we've learned on our journey together? Well, one of the big lessons I've learned is 
that enamels are actually very powerful and we only need small amounts of them and it's better to build up the layers uh, in small thin layers rather than trying to put on too much. I made the mistake of putting too much red enamel on this piece to start with. I did want an intensity of color but in actual fact, I found it became slightly blotchy um, uh, and it's still pretty blotchy. I've added things like yellow silver stain to it, which, which livens it up. The whole kind of painting technique for this is quite gestural. It's quite loose and free and open. Enamels are very strong and in very intense colors. And you can actually apply a very thin wash of enamel onto the surface of the glass and still get great results. This is a good example here. This is um, a much, paler uh, pink. I don't know if the camera is picking that up or not, but basically um, it was a very, very thin layer of uh, enamel, which is this magenta pink enamel here, um, which you can see goes to quite a strong color, but I put on a very thin layer with uh, some water-based medium. This is a slightly thicker layer and you can see, I think, hopefully the difference between those two intensities of color. This was just a complete mess in a way. I was sort of experimenting and playing around. I put enamels on the front surface. I also experimented with putting some yellow silver stain on to see whether the yellow silver stain would actually penetrate through the enamel. And it has to an extent, but it's not as strong. So really there's a lot of takeaways from this. The main one I think is for me to carry on experimenting. And again, I would encourage you to also carry on experimenting. The potential for using enamels is fantastic. There is so much we can do. There's so much extra we can bring to our painted pieces by using ena enamels. And really this, as I say, has been a voyage of discovery and we've gone on it together and hopefully you found it interesting. And what a revelation the Roche oil painting medium has been. This water-based painting medium has been absolutely fantastic. I generally paint with water and gum arabic or oils like clove oil and lavender oil, but the Roche painting medium has been absolutely brilliant. And check out this video on yellow silver stain, how to get great effects with using yellow silver stain. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.